<laughs> All right. Um, good evening, guys. Let's get started. So we're going to talk to about today about network models. We'll continue to investigate various models, and uh, today we're going to talk about um, two very popular models. One of them is called dynamical growth, um, and another one is a small world model. So we have previously discussed that there are certain features that exist in, uh, in, in, in networks in practice. And um, you know, we know that, that real world network, they do have power law distribution, heavy tail distribution, or um, the fact that in real networks, um, there are usually no degrees that are distributed according to the power law, which means you know, a few uh, very high degree nodes and lots of uh, small degree nodes. Um, then typically, um, networks have a small average uh, distance between nodes, which means, uh, or you know, sometimes you can talk about diameter, a small graph diameter. Uh, networks do have a large clustering coefficient, um, or you know, another word for that is transitivity. That's the number of triangles. The fact that um, if there is, a, if, if a person have two friends, that those two friends with a very high probability know each other. And there are other smaller features that we actually haven't talked about yet, but the fact that, for example, in, in the network, usually we have a gigantic or giant connected component, the same way as we've seen in uh, um, Erdogan model. Uh, quite often, there is a hierarchical structure, and et cetera, et cetera. So we'll, every lecture, we'll discover more and more on those, um, all of those features. So we already talked last time about one of the generative models, and generative in the sense that it actually generates networks. So we talked about um, uh, erdos runem model of random graph, and that model goes back to 1959. Um, today, we're going to talk about uh, two other models, uh, which are sort of much fresher models. It's a preferential attachment model by Barbasha and Albert, and a small world uh, model by Watson Strogatz. Um, they both has been created quite recently when this sort of new wave of investigation um, of um, networks occurred in the late 90s. So the, the idea. Um, so we start with Barabasha Albert model. And, and the idea is the following. That in a previous model, like um, erdos Rene model, we looked um, at the fixed number of nodes that are available in the network. And then we tried to connect them somehow. Well, um, in, in reality, and that's what uh, Barabasha and Albert noticed, that the, the real networks, they actually grow in networks. They evolve in time. And um, the number of nodes grow this time. Well, you know, example is a citation network. Somebody's published, somebody publishes a scientific paper, and um, it's you know being cited. And the longer it is out there, the more sort of new papers appear, and they still cite all the work. And and so the graph, if we consider a graph of the citation graph where nodes are uh, scientific papers and uh, edges are citations from one paper to another. Um, it's growing. Uh, it's growing in terms of number of nodes and in terms of number of edges. So it's dynamical, evolving graph. Um, and by the way, in this case, it will be directed graph. Um, there is a graph of collaborations that also typically grow with time. Um, you know, web graph increasing, social network people joining and making friends. Now, it is a little more complicated to try to model both processes. Like, for example, in social network, you have people, new people joining and making new friends, so new edge, edges appear in the network. But at the same time, you know, people sometimes unfriend each other, right? Or, and then the, the edges uh, being removed or uh, delete nodes, so entirely leaving um, the social network. So we will start with the simplest case, the simplest model where we consider a growing network, growing with time, and we'll assume that uh, no person leaves the network or no edges being removed. So it is pure 
growth process. So with, with, with time, we'll get more nodes and more edges. And we'll try to see what it leads to in terms of the model. All right. So here is the idea. Um, imagine the, the following situation. At the beginning, at time t equal to 0, we have some number of um, nodes. Um, let's say, OK, I'll do it this way. So we have some number of nodes, initial number of nodes. Um, again, for simplicity right now, we'll think about them as being unconnected nodes. But it's not going to affect um, a lot. Then, at every time stamp, at every time step, and we'll be considering at this moment like um, integer time steps, we'll be adding a new node with some number of edges, with a fixed number of edges. So pretty much, let's say, OK, uh, right now we have four nodes. Um, and at every time step, we'll have a new node added to the network, say, with three edges. So a new node being added, and this node attaches with the edges it has to, th to you know, three out of four nodes that we already have in the network, and it selects nodes to attach randomly. So for example, we'll get this connection, maybe this connection, maybe that connection. Um, let me change. OK, then another node joins the network. And let's say we have a new node here. And this node will also randomly select three nodes and connect to them. Then they get, in the next moment of time, we'll get another node joining the network. And that node also connects to three other nodes randomly and so on and so forth. So network will be growing. Every node will have a degree that is higher than um, m, the original number of edges um, it came with. Um, and it's going to be higher than m because, well, first of all, it has original m edges, um, so m, m neighbors, original degree m with which the node came into the network, plus the new coming nodes can connect to this node. And so the degree of the node will be growing. So we're talking about undirected network. And so we do not differentiate between sort of out incoming and outgoing edges. Right? And so um, the, 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 node, the degree of the node um, in this kind of model will be growing with time. If you want to formalize this, we, are, we, we have to put, first of all, this sort of initial boundary conditions that says that if the node joins the network at moment t equal to i, and we'll use a notation, it's ki. So it's, I, it's ki, it's node number i. Its degree at the moment when the node joins the network is m. All right, so it comes in with m edges, yeah. three edges, as, as we, we see on this picture. And the probability to attach to any node in the system, any node that already exists, is proportional to, is, is, uni, um, is, is uni, uniform at random, and which means it's inversely proportional to this value. So what does it says? Well, it says just um, we're looking at n naught is a number of uh, nodes at the beginning, and in every time stamp, uh, time step, we're adding a new node. Well, for example, let's say um, we we are adding node uh, at the time moment. Uh, let's say at t equal to eleven. So it's going to be eleventh extra node. Well, that means this node will have an option to connect to either and not original nodes or to the 10 nodes that joined the network before it. And that's why the probability to connect 
to any node is 1 over n0 plus t minus 1. Okay? Because t minus 1 is how many nodes already added, has been added, and n0 is how many nodes existed from the starting point. And in fact, um, usually, of course, we'll consider t to be large compared to n node, and we'll, later on, we'll just ignore n, um, n naught, n zero. All right, so in this case, uh, we can um, actually approximate, calculate um, the average node degree at time t. And, and, and the idea is that that node degree will, uh, at first, well, first of all, every node, when it joins a network, it has a degree m because that's how many edges it brings in. And then on every time step, um, th there is a probability um, that the, the degree of the node will increase. And so if we're considering average or expected value of the node degree as a function of time, you know, we need to add more terms to the sum. And, and the idea here is the following. So denominator is just a probability um, that at this moment, at the moment t equal to i, um, new node that joins the system will connect to this particular node we're talking about. And um, m um, is, uh, you can think about this the following way. There are m edges being introduced, and there are m0 plus i minus 1 places these edges can be connected to. So the probability that it connects to one of the nodes is just m over this and not plus i minus 1. Or you can think it other way around, just saying that, OK, we're trying to calculate um, expected value of the node. Well, what do you do? Well, you take um, the, the value, um, which is m, and you just multiply by the, by the probability. And so as time goes by, we added getting more and more um, nodes added to the system, so more and more edges added to the system, so the expected value of edge increases um, until the time t. So if you look closely at the sum, this is actually um, just a series, harmonic series. Um, you know, we can factor out m in this case. And if you, for a second, um, just decide that, OK, well, look at t much larger um, than n0. So we're going to be looking at uh, you know, pretty, big, pretty big time. then you will see that, <clears throat> that this is a harmonic series, which starts from uh, 1 over i minus 1, or 1 over i, and goes to 1 over t. Now, we can approximate the sum of the harmonic series as a logarithm. If you don't remember that, you know, take a look um, that how you can actually add up 1 over um, n harmonic series uh, if, you, if you do partial sum of it. But you can approximate it um, as the following, as an actual logarithm where t is uh, this t and i where we start. Um, the way to think about it is very simple because to calculate those type of, 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 of series, think about uh, integral tx over x, right? And it, go, it goes from um, i to t as the limits. Um, this integral is exactly what we're doing here. So um, we can approximate um, evolution or the node degree of the node, um, of any node uh, on average as a function of time. And um, there are two parameters here. Well, first of all, function of time, right? So um, the node degree on average de increases with, with time. And that, again, happens because when new nodes join the system, they connect to, to nodes, and so on average, the, any degree of, of any node will grow with time. Index i uh, means the time when this particular node we're considering has joined the network. And if you notice, this is, the i is, is right here, and so the larger the i, the smaller is ki from t, is just because that really means the following, that you have time growing, and here is some moment um, i when the node appeared. And, and so what happens is we're considering, let's say, some moment here. 
Well, uh, what, what's important for the size uh, of the node is the elapsed time since um, the node appeared in the network. So what's important is this, is the distance from the moment when the node appeared to um, sort of the current moment, the current T. Okay, so let's take a look at, um, at this formula because, you know, that, that's, that's actually the essence um, of the model. So <clears throat> notice a few things. Uh, what's shown on this picture are various values. Um, it's k i of t, it's k i of t, shown at, um, for, for different i's, for different values of i's. So when i is equal to 10, for example, what it means is the following, that the node appeared at the time 10. And then the node degree growing, and the green line showing how the node degree grows. So the next node appeared at time 20. And again, we're considering here a situation when every node, when it comes in, a new node, it brings in, let's say, 20, um, uh, 20 edges. So it starts with a degree 20, and then the degree increases. So another node joins later at the, the, say, at the, the, the time step 20, and it's also slowly increasing. Sort of the red node joins um, at time 40. So the key observation here, well, for, so first of all, you know, the, these are sort of the, the results of this formula, right? It's one plus log. Um, and it's a function of time, so you know it's slowly growing. It's actually you know just a logarithmic lo logarithmic growth. But the interesting point here is though this line never intersect, and so that means um, this is a sort of older node. This is a little younger node. This is the youngest node in terms of the time of joining, and the youngest in the sense that if we're say somewhere here at time eighty, um, this is the shortest time from forty to 80, right? So th this node is the youngest node. Um, and the node number 10 is the oldest node. So this is the oldest node. So the oldest node in this model always have an advantage in terms of its degree. So even though the attachment happens at random, simply because node 10 has been in the system longer than any other node, its degree will be higher than other nodes. So it, it is the sort of what's called first mover advantage, which means you know, any person who joins earlier um, has a tremendous advantage um, in terms of, um, the, well, in this case, in terms of the node degree. You can think about you know, advantage in terms of money, whatever. Um, and, and that happens because on early stages, edges, the new edges that come into the system. They're much more available than at late stages. Well, because um, there are very few nodes to connect to, and so the, the, the first nodes get getting all those connections. And um, the degree growing faster. And later on, um, if you're joining later on, well, the, the, you get less nodes because there is, there is more and more competition. And if some nodes joined, say, here, the growth will be like this and like that, and et cetera, et cetera. So within this simplest model, um, you can already see this sort of first mover advantage. So the fact that joining early will make the node, um, will, will make the node to have higher node degree or many more neighbors than for the later nodes. I mean, on some sense, it's obvious, uh, but on the other hand, it's sort of surprising that there is such a significant advantage, um, simply because the model is, is random. Um, and so you would think that there might be a chance that sort of the node that joins later somehow you know, gets, gets more connections. Well, on average, it's not going to happen. So those lines do not cross.
it's worth looking at the same formula um, so from, from, the, from the different angle. Um, and the different angle, in a sense, let's look at this formula as a function of I, as a function of the time of uh, joining the network. So here is how to understand this picture. Let's fix some moment in time. Let's say time equal to, two, uh, to 200. And let's look at the node degrees of all the nodes that join the network at different times before time 200. So that's what is shown. Um, in fact, if we look at the degree of the node that joined the network at time 200, that's its um, degree, it's 20. If we take a look at the moment of time 200, at the node that joined at 100, its node degree has already grown to around 40. If we look at the time 200, at the node degree, that, at the node that joined at time 50, its degree already grown to around like, what is it, 55. And if we took at the very first nodes, that degree over 120. So what, what it shows here are the degrees of the nodes, and um, I, it's really the time of the, when the node joined the network. So again, what happens is, here's the time axis T, um, we select some moment of time here, um, time equal, say, 200. Um, and we consider for all i's in the past, um, we, go, we go along this sort of timeline, take a look at all i's in the past, and we see at, at this moment, at time equal 200, at now, um, what are the degrees of the nodes. And clearly that, that those nodes that adjourned the earliest, say at time zero, they have the highest degree. And then the node goes that joined um, later at 50 has a lower degree. Join, node that joined at time 100 has lower degree. Well, and the node that just joined has degree um, 20 because it comes in with 20 edges. OK. So, and, and of course, we can draw this sort of lines for um, every time moment, you know, we can draw it for 20 or for, for t equal to 50, for t equal to 100. Um, so <coughs> say for t equal to um, 100, um, we got a different line, it's this blue line. And again, um, the nodes that joined exactly at the time 100, here they are. The nodes that joined earlier, well, we can see them their degrees along this blue line. Now, this is maybe not a, not a very obvious graph. You, you, know, you, know, you need to a little bit you know, concentrate looking at it and think about this. But the, the idea is very simple. Again, this is not a time evolution. This is just a snapshot at one particular moment of time. And the three different colors, three different lines gives us different moments of time. And let's say if we look at the red line, it just tells us how far, how much, um, different node degrees evolved since um, the node appeared, all right? Okay, so why do we need this graph? Well, we needed to actually to do the following um, calculations. Um, I would like to answer on the following question. I would like to find um, all the nodes, all the nodes that at time t, has degree less than particular k. So if you want to look uh, back at the picture, what I'm just saying is the following. I would like to find, at some moment of time, nodes that have degree less than k. Um, in, in this example, um, Let's look, let's look at um, k equal to 40. So I would like to find all the nodes that at time t um, has degree less than 40. So let's say, um, okay, let me draw it here. 
So 40 is right here. Uh, this is a line of, of degree 40. So if I want to find all the nodes that let's say at time t equal to 20, uh, to 200, has degree, all those nodes that have degree less than 40, where they are? Well, they're here. So these are all, these are all nodes. I can, I can try to show them here. So these are all the nodes that at time 200 have degree um, less than 40. Or I can, if I, if I want to again, um, looking at this picture, um, at time 100, if I want all the nodes that have degrees less than 40, well, here they are. It is there on this interval. And if I'm looking at a 50, they're on this interval. So here they are. And again, if I'm looking at, at, at you know, at 100, well, here they are from, from this intersection to this point. So these are all nodes that at time 200 um, have degree less than 40. And that means, well, that happens for the sort of younger nodes, right? Um, and uh, here we have nodes. Um, okay, let me do another color, get another color. Um, here we have nodes uh, for the blue. And uh, these are the green nodes. So those colored lines are, are those nodes that at given time, and at the time is 200 or 100 or 50, have degree less than 40, okay? That's sort of um, you know, the, the, the picture here. And if we go and look now at the formulas, um, that's pretty much what the formulas say. Look, so we're trying to detect <coughs> all the nodes that at time um, t has degree less than, say, less than this k. All right. So the, the what it pretty much says is is the following: We'll take the formula that was the the the, the curve that we have on the picture, all right? And we're just trying to figure out um, this intersection. Um, to the thread. So we intersected here, um, going down there, and we want to see, find all the nodes that uh, has degree less than uh, less than forty, and sort of these are those nodes from here to the end. Okay, so that's what it says here. Well, uh, you know, we can we can actually work on this inequality. Um, it, you know, it's, it's very simple. Um, take M, put it on the right-hand side. You know, we, we have logarithm now. Um, and then we can calculate I. So what it really says is we're trying to find this I, and what we're looking for is this point, from which, you know, to the right of this point, um, the, the node degree is less than 40. So for all the nodes from this point to on to the right to sort of moment in time that we have right now to moment t, all the nodes have degree, they all have degrees less than 40. Well, the younger nodes, per se. And there are other nodes that are older nodes, but their degree will be greater than 40 by this moment. Now, the reason I'm spending so much time on, on, on explaining this, because it's sort of the centerpiece, uh, from here it will be much easier. Um, the reason we're actually looking for those node degrees, for those nodes with degrees less than given, is because we can easily calculate then the fraction of the nodes with that degree. But the fraction of the node with that degree is really nothing else than a probability that randomly selected node has a degree less than given. And we want to do that because it, this is nothing more than the, 
than the definition of CDF, cumulative distribution function. So I mean, yeah. our ultimate goal, the reason we had been looking at this, um, at, this, at this graph is because we wanted to calculate the probability that randomly selected node from, um, the, all, from all the nodes at, that, at, at the moment of time t has a degree less than given degree k. And um, that yeah. equation gives it to us because um, this probability will be equal to um, what we need to calculate this part if the index here i and it ends everything with t that the total number of nodes in this interval is t minus i well and there is uh, n naught because you know we start with that and the total number of nodes by that time is n naught plus t so now we can calculate and we can take i that we just calculated and substitute it here. And taking into account that n naught is very small compared to t, we're still looking into like longer times, time frame, um, we can approximate it with the following equation. So what happened here, um, I just dropped n naught and I divided by t. Okay, so then uh, we just differentiate by k. And by doing so, we convert um, CDF into PDF, probability density function, or probability distribution function. And we see that it became exponential. Now, it works for k greater or equal to m. Um, and, and the reason for that is because um, Anytime we add a node, it already starts with m edges. So any node in the system initially have at least m degree, degree m. Um, every, every node with time, the degree will only grow. It, it, we, we, do not de decree, we do not decrease the degree of the node here. OK, so we got the uh, p of k, and, and it is exponential. Um, it's, well. Yeah, not, not exactly what we see in, in the real life, because remember, in the real life, we see distribution function that is um, a power law, and here it's exp exponent, but it is something. So at least we know that in this type of model, um, the distribution function is um, exponential. Now, we can actually get to this same um, idea um, a little bit in, in a little bit different fashion um, if we'll use what's called mean field approximation or um, we'll just consider um, the, the equation, you know, we, we'll look um, at the idea that the timing is continuous and let's try, try to do the continuous approximation. So in some sense, uh, it's always easier to do continuous approximation than discrete um, easier to do integrals than sums. Um, so we'll just sort of follow this very, very simple idea that um, when the network grows, when the network grows, what happens is we are adding uh, nodes, and the degree of um, the node of the ith node at the time t plus delta t will be equal so the degree of this node at the time t plus you know small addition now what's that small addition well again if we think about this as a continuous process and and we're talking about you know delta t's so what we need to do to calculate uh, on average the, the new node degree is really just the uh, the uh, the probability um, that the new edge um, will connect to the node and that probability is, is really just the ratio. So the probability is 1 over t that a new um, edge connects to the node. And uh, since on every step uh, we get m edges uh, imported in the system, you know, with a new node coming in. So the probability, um, the, 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 the expectation value uh, for increasing of the k will be m over t. Now, again, this is sort of pushing the limits in the sense that 
uh, it, it's a discrete problem, and we, and we talked already about this, that, okay, well, you know, nodes appear at discrete uh, timestamps. But, you know, you can consider this, um, you can try to write it as differential equation. Okay, and that's what we're doing. If we take this equation and just look at, at the limit of delta t going to zero, and that's how you usually deal with differential equations, um, we'll, we'll take this um, ki t plus delta t uh, minus ki of t, put it on the left-hand side, divide by the delta t, um, we, we, get, we get a differential equation, and the initial conditions for this differential equations that says <coughs> that at the moment when the node appears in the system, its degree is just m. Um, so we can easily you know, rewrite, this, uh, re rewrite this equation as um, decay over m um, equal dt over t, do the separation of variables. Um, and then um, if we integrate here, we'll have to put limits. Um, uh, we need to go from time from i to t from the moment when the node appeared to the time t. And when the node appeared, um, the node degree was m. And you know, it's k um, uh, at the moment uh, t. And so if we take this integral, uh, we can integrate and get the same formula. Now, this is a sort of approximation. We got this, that formula is in a more fair way by actually looking at the summation because it's a discrete process, but it just shows you that you know you, you can get there um, by doing simple sort of continuous time approximation. Okay, um, but idea is is exactly the same. So we have nodes, and at every moment of time, we get a new node added to the system, um, and every new node added to the system um, it brings us m edges. And the probability that this node, that, 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 that edges, that one of those edges will get connected to node uh, number i is, is 1 over t. And, and the key here, in fact, that this probability does not, depend, does not depend on the node number. So this probability is uniform. Um, the probability that the new um, edges that come in into the system connect to any node i, um, they do not depend on the degree of the node i. They just uniform. And that's what this says. That's sort of the key here, the, the key in the model. All right, any questions so far? All right, I'll, I'll continue. We'll see how it goes. Um, all right. So the, the next step, um, the next step um, is a uh, preferential attachment model. So, so far, what we have done is uh, we calculated, we calculated um, the model um, of random growing network. It is growing because on every time step, time step, we get new nodes and new edges added to the system. So it's growing. But it is random. Um, at every moment of time, I mean, every node that comes into the system, it's connected with equal probability to um, any other node in the system. So it is growing uniformly at random. And we calculated that for, this, for that particular model, the degree distribution, so the node degree will grow as a logarithmic function, and the degree distribution will be exponential which really means that, okay, well, we do have uh, 
uh, that the probability to find um, you know, the, the, the smaller nodes is pretty high. The probability to find larger nodes decreases, decays exponentially. Um, so which means it actually makes very unlikely that we have a very high degree nodes in the system. That differs from you know, the real world, where um, there are high degree nodes. And we know that the distribution is power law. So the model is missing something. And this sort of something was added to the model by Barbash and Albert in their paper in 1999. Um, so the paper um, was, the, the paper suggested the model that's called preferential attachment. Um, we'll talk a little later about um, the, the, the sort of some history behind this model. But for right now, let's see uh, what's preferential attachment is. And the idea is, is, is in, in fact, the model uh, overall is the same as uh, previous one with randomly growing network, but with a, one very important change. So in this case, when we attach, when the new node comes into the system and brings in M edges, those edges attach us to the nodes, not in a random, not uniformly at random, but with a probability proportional to the degree of the node. So for example, if we had here, let me try to draw this. <clears throat> Let's say we have a, we already at some moment of time, we already have a system with several nodes. Somehow, you know, by, 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 by that moment, um, let's say we have this kind of a graph. Um, and then a new node comes in. So when the new node comes in, in the preferential attachment model, it will have, it will have high probability to connect to this node and to this node than to any other nodes. Uh, because those two nodes have high degrees. Now, in the previous model, random graph model, a random growing graph model, um, the new node coming in will have equal probabilities connecting to any node. Here, there is a preferential attachment. So in some sense, this is sort of explicit statement of if money goes to the money, um, you know, when, you, when, when somebody comes in and select friends, he would rather join people with lots of friends. And I mean, you know, there is a, <coughs> it, it's quite a reasonable idea. Um, you know, when, when you select people you want, as a co-author, as people you want to publish to, well, you most likely select people that are well published. And so the more publication they have, you know, the more chances you will select them. Um, citation, um, you know, if somebody starts citing the paper, um, a lot of more people start learning about this paper, the more people start citing the paper. Um, you know, friendship, think about Facebook or, or other social network. Uh, somebody comes in uh, and, you know, connects to new friends. Well, you know, nobody wants to, to, to be friends with the losers, with people who do not have friends. So, you know, people connect to the people with lots of friends. So with high degree nodes. And so this is sort of self-enforcing system. Um, the, the, the higher you node, the, the higher the degree of the node at the moment T, you know, the more chances that the new node will in fact connect to it. So um, it, it can be expressed formally as a probability um, to connect to the node with degree ki is proportional to that degree ki. Now it is normalized right now to the sum of the total number of the degrees. Well, that's you know the normalization factor simply because um, at that moment, um, you know, at, at that moment, what we need to do is we need um, to calculate the total number of available um, nodes or available edges, if you wish, 
and that's the normal that's the normalization or you can think about it uh, because it has to be a probability well it has to be normalized to one so the normalization factor is ki over some of all ki's um, but other than that model is exactly the same um, as as a previous one so this is a quick um, illustration of the process uh, we pretty much talked over it but um, here's the idea. Let's say um, the system starts um, at the initial moment of time, you know, with three nodes, and, and they're connected. I mean, you can, you can have any structure at the beginning. And then the new node comes in, and it randomly selects um, where to connect. At the very first moment, since each and every node has equal degrees, well, it doesn't matter to where it connects. So the new node has two degrees, and it connects to, to two nodes. But then what happens is the, the, no, the degree of those two nodes getting higher, and it's shown here by, by, by the fact that they're bigger. And the new node, the white node that comes in, well, it will connect with a higher probability to those two guys. And, and the next moment of time, um, you, know, you get a new node coming in, and again, it will connect with the, to the higher degree nodes, though because there is some randomness in the process, it's still um, a randomized choice of nodes. It's just uh, sort of biased more towards high degree nodes. Um, you will have sort of non-uniform growth. So it's not only <clears throat> the new coming node not necessarily connecting to the highest degree node, but it has high probability to connect to that node. And so, you know, as the time goes by, you get the following picture, the next picture, the next picture. And so eventually, you will get a, you will get a network with uh, nodes degrees distributed very, very unevenly. So you will have nodes with a very large degree, and you have nodes with low degree. So it, we had very similar behavior even with um, first model with just sort of random growing graph, uh, where all the nodes would have higher degree. In this model, we even enhanced that, that, that tendency even more, simply because we, uh, when the connection happens, we even prefer higher degree nodes to the lower degree nodes. So it's randomized, but with, with a preference. OK, uh, without going too much in, into the details in the, in the formulas, uh, right now we should be able to easily calculate those things. Um, we'll not do discrete version. We'll just do right away um, uh, through the differential equation simply. Well, it's just because it's easier and we get the same result. So again, um, the degree of the node ki at the moment time t plus delta t is equal to the to the node degree at time t plus um, you know the, the the probability that the node that we're going to connect to that node, which is p as a function of ki times um, m, where m and how many um, edges being introduced into the system at that moment. So the only difference, well, in fact, this is exactly the same equation as we looked at in the previous model. Um, the only difference is that in that model, this p of ki was a, con was a function of time. It didn't depend on the node degree. And now it does depend. So, and, and the dependency is given by this, which is the ratio of the node, which, which, which is the proportion to the node degree. So what it says is the changes in the node degree, in the, um, in the degree of the node i at the moment t, is really, the changes with time, is really proportional to the degree of the node. That's, that's all that, that, that is in this equation. So one other thing is uh, just to remind that um, here at the bottom, we have sum over total sum over all um, node degrees. Well, the total sum over the all node degrees is the total number um, of, you know, the sum over all node degrees is equal twice number of edges. You know, we talked about it that in a graph, um, the, the total, the sum of all the node degrees is equal to twice the number of edges. Well, since we are introducing um, edges, m edges, at every moment of time, and we're talking about the time t, we have mt uh, edges 
introduced into the system by the moment t, right? And so what this formula, what happens here is sum of ki is just equal to 2mt. Um, and the numerator remains the same. So m cancels out, and we get differential equation. Now, this is a little bit different differential equation, but you again do the separation of variables. Um, you know, you get 2k over dk over k is equal to dt over um, t over 2t. And then we can easily integrate this um, uh, differential equations. We, we, we do have the same initial conditions. And we get, we'll get the, the, the formula for the evolution of the node k as function of t. And this is different from what we had before. Previously, the evolution of the node degree with time was logarithmic growth. Here, it's not logarithmic. It's actually um, square root, right? So the node degree growth as a square root of the function of time. Well, uh, is it good or bad? It is different. It is different. And we'll see how in, in a second. But first, um, what does it lead to? Well, so this is a evolution. And we're going to follow exactly the same, uh, exactly the same <coughs> derivation as we did uh, previously for the random model. So we're going to select all the nodes that have a degree less than k. Here they are. Um, these are the nodes with node number i greater than um, m squared over k squared t. And then the fraction of nodes with that degree is actually giving us cumulative distribution function. Um, the fraction of nodes with that degree, you know, we, we define exactly the same way as before. Um, the only difference is we put here um, our new value for i. And again, um, we, we, we think of t being much larger than n naught. So we're looking pretty far in time. So we can cancel that out. And then we get the distribution function, cumulative distribution function, be like that. And then we can actually calculate distribution function by just taking a derivative of this. And if you differentiate this, remember, we differentiate with respect to k. So we get 2m squared over k cubed. So all of a sudden, for probability distribution function, we got power law. And in fact, we got a very good power law. We got a power law with a cubic value. It's k cubed. And th so that means for this power law, um, we, we, the average is well-defined, and the, you know, the fluctuation um, are well-defined and well-computed. Uh, we talked about it. So by changing the model from um, just random attachment to preferential random attachment, we change the distribution function of the node degrees in the system from being exponential to being power law. Um, here is just for comparison purposes, um, here, here is a few pictures. Um, <coughs> so um, this picture shows us how no degree changes in both models. Um, the blue line is uh, Barabasha, uh, I'm sorry, the blue line is random. And uh, the red line is this Barabasha Albert model. So the blue line means we have a random growing graph. So where a new, new node comes in and they randomly collect, connects um, to other nodes. The red line means the new node comes in and it attaches to other nodes, but with a preferential, with, with where the new node prefers to connect to the nodes with high degree. And that mechanism actually forces um, faster growth for certain nodes. So the, the rich, rich 
getting richer and, and getting richer much, much faster than in random model. Here is a comparison in between PDFs, uh, probability density function, uh, we get for a random graph and we get uh, for Marbashi Albert model. Um, on the left, on the left side, on the left picture, um, you see them in uh, uh, sort of normal axis. On the right, it's log log scale. So there were a couple things to notice: is that Barbashi Albert has a much is much much higher here, which means there are higher probability to have nodes with a low degree. And at the same time, there's something happens in here. Well, you don't see it on this picture, but you can clearly see it um, on log scale. Um, these are the tails or, or the part with high degree nodes. So if you notice, in the case exponential function and blue is exponent in log log scale, it, it, it bends. Um, the number of the high degree nodes the probability that the node has a high degree, it, it, it goes down faster than for Barbasha Albert. And in fact, um, this distance, this difference, is, is very significant. It, it is you know, several orders of magnitude. Uh, so what it says is the following. You know, the simulation is for the same uh, number, for the same M, and, um, and uh, so this is the same, the same type of model, just one. Um, in, in one case, we simulate Barbashi Albert. In the other case, we simulate random. And, and you realize that what happens, um, Barbashi Albert has, with much higher probability, nodes with extremely high degree here on the tails. But at the same time, it has many more nodes than randomized um, at, at the low degrees. So in some sense, if you think about, again, the sort of society, it creates very, very, very unequal society with majority uh, population extremely poor, and uh, um, you know some people are extremely rich. So just a random model with sort of money going to random people will not create this. It's when money goes preferentially to those people who already have money. Uh, money goes to friends. Um, so that mechanism. Um, is is implemented um, in this process. Okay, so that's pretty much it for for the preferential attachment model. There are a couple other things um, you know I need to point out to, for this to have a complete picture. So first of all, um, we get power law distribution. One can actually calculate, will not do it, but one can calculate for this model um, the following result for average path length. Um, it's logarithm of the number of nodes uh, divided by log log of n. Well, log log of n is, is very slow function, so you can in fact think of average path length as being logarithmic, which is not bad which means it has, it possesses this sort of small world properties. But at the same time, clustering coefficient, and these are numerical simulations, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's hard to calculate clustering here. And clustering, again, the probability that you have triangles, or the, the average number of triangles um, over the total <laughs> number of possible triangles. Um, it, it's very low, and if n goes to infinity, so as, as a network growth, uh, clustering coefficient is, here goes to zero. And we know that in real world network, um, clustering is non-zero when, when the network grows. So in some sense, this model, well, first of all, it satisfies um, the, the, the power law distribution. And, and second, it actually, well, predict pretty well the logarithmic nature, um, sort of the small world. But it fails to, to provide um, good explanation for uh, correlation for clustering coefficient. So it, it still remains a model, but it's 
quite successful in the financial model because uh, it's probably the first model uh, describing the networks that managed to uh, um, generate the power law distribution function, and sort of naturally um, generate that, um, that power law. So again, the key here, there are actually two components. So first, it's the fact that um, we have a dynamical growth, so there is a change with time. Uh, we add new and new nodes and yeah. edges. And the second factor, so, but that one thing is not enough. So the, the second important factor is um, every time we add a new, no, new node with new edges, those edges connect to old nodes uh, using preferential attachment mechanism. So they, they connect uh, with a higher probability that nodes to the nodes that have higher degrees. Okay, so there are two, this, these are the, the, the two key components of, of the model. Um, and here is just a simple picture. Um, so you will have some idea what it looks like. Um, when um, we st and, and this, this model starts with uh, several nodes not connected. Um, when we go for, um, say, m equal to 1, m equal to 1, Um, we, we, we have, uh, <coughs> um, we, we have the following almost, we have a tree, um, and, and this tree, uh, just happens because every new node that joins the, the network, you know, has only one connection and that node prefers to join, um, to connect to the nodes that already have higher degree. And so you get this sort of tree looking structure, uh, M equal to two, it's a little bit more, um, sort of convoluted, but you see that sort of the, the freshest nodes, the nodes that are just joined, they have degree two, and the nodes sort of deeper inside, they have higher degrees. When M3, well, you know, you, you, you got the story. Now, looking at this picture, it's very clear, easy to see that on the left-hand side here, um, it, it looks like a tree, and, and for a tree, it's obvious that, uh, you know, the average path length is logarithmic in terms of the number of nodes, right? So it takes a logarithmic number of N uh, steps, to actually traverse and average the tree. Um, and it's also clear that there are no triangles, so clustering coefficient is zero. Um, it's not that clear on, on these pictures, but you, know, you can show that. And if you actually look closer, you realize that you, know, you don't, though there are like lots of connections um, on this picture, but you don't see too many triangles. And so that's sort of the, the manifestation that the clustering coefficient is small. But that's what those, networks yeah. look like um, and, and yes these networks will have power law distribution which means um, there are like several nodes here that are of high degree but the majority of the nodes they do have low degrees okay um, just a quick historical node um, you know to, to be fair uh, Though this model is called a preferential attachment model by Barbash and Albert, um, this model has been, you know, rediscovered multiple, multiple times. Um, in fact, um, the, for the first time, um, this model, uh, this type of model, well, it was not about networks, but just uh, as, the, as, as a process, as a statistics, as a process that gives us, that gives uh, someone a distribution function um, that has this power law behavior. Um, it was done by uh, Yule. It's called Yule's process. Um, Yule was a statistician uh, done in a century ago. Um, there is a more there is a generalization of this process, which is called Pola Ordens model, um, done by George Pola. And I don't know um, approximate dates, but I would guess it's like probably you know uh, also in those in those times like forties. Um, and and the idea of this model. Um, it's, it's, it's actually a very widely used model uh, for, for EARN um, where you can generate distributions. Um, it has been used uh, by a famous paper by uh, Herbert Simon, who was an economist, and where in that paper, he, for the first time, described the distribution of wealth, talking about the fact that the wealth is distributed very, very well, unfair, un, un, unequal, uneven, um, and it has this power law. Um, nature of it that you know the 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 the, the minority of the people owe the majority of the wealth in, in the world, um, 
and it was discovered, rediscovered yet one more time by the physicist um, Derek de Sola Price in 1976, uh, where when he actually looked at the citation network, uh, and and he talked about the um, citation to scientific papers, and he called this cumulative advantage, and and, and so you know Barbash and Albert sort of rediscovered this model, uh, you know, once again um, in, in, in 1999. Um, but that, that model has a sort of very, very rich history. Now, uh, the difference what Barbash and Albert done compared to sort of previous history was they looked actually at the network. Um, all the previous models was just the statistical models and they talked about the distribution, well, except for, um, you know, citation networks, uh, done by price. So, I mean, you know, probably fair to say that uh, this preferential attachment is sort of one of the version of this cumulative advantage model um, of 1976 um, on the model of citation networks. But if you look at the today's literature, um, you'll find very, very few references um, to this cumulative advantage uh, model, and people mostly talk, talk about preferential attachment. Okay, in, in, in the time that left today, we're going to talk about a slightly different model. Um, this model is, is much easier um, than the preferential attachment. Um, it, it's, and, and, and in terms of sort of historical um, timeline, it actually appeared before preferential attachment model. Um, and the idea was, uh, the idea of this model is to actually explicitly try to explicitly model um, the small world, small world behavior. Now, <clears throat> just a sec. So the way it is done is the following. Imagine that we have this kind of, well, a little weird graph um, that we, we see here on the picture. Um, it is a ring, and uh, it, it's shown as a ring uh, we, we, because you know we don't want to have any boundary conditions. But if you look closer, um, it consists of triangles, and so this graph has very high clustering coefficient. Um, in, in fact, you can easily calculate it. You know, we, we can take say this neighborhood so we have a central node here and has four neighbors so we can easily calculate a clustering coefficient because clustering coefficient is the ratio of um, the, 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 the number of connection between the neighbors of the node to the total possible number of connections well there are four neighbors for this node. Um, and the total possible number of connections between them will be um, four times three over two. And the actual number of edges between those nodes are one edge, second edge, um, third edge. So there are three edges between those neighbors. Um, so clustering coefficient will be three over over that, um, which makes it one half. So <laughs> for this simple graph, and, and if you notice, it's 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 absolutely symmetric. So every uh, every node has the same um, ha has identical neighborhood in terms of the number of nodes. Um, it's the, the degree of the node is fixed. It's equal to four for every node. Um, so you can easily sort of study this system, right? Clustering coefficient is one half. Degree is fixed equal to four. You know, you can just explicitly calculate graph diameter. It's going to be around eight. So this network has high clustering coefficient. It's one half. And uh, the clustering coefficient in here does not depend on a, a number of nodes. It does not degree, de does not degree. It doesn't decrease, decrease with the number of nodes. But at the same time, this is not a small world. 
it's not a small world because you know to get from this node to say this node one has to travel through all these guys um, and you know it makes eight steps and if we add keep adding nodes to the system um, the diameter or average pathway will be proportional to the number of nodes so it's no way small world so the question uh, is is there is any way to create a small world uh, from this picture um, and, 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 and the idea is the following if we somehow decide or and and, and uh, if we somehow can change the connectivity pattern and just take say node somewhere here and you know connect it to the nodes on the other side and take node here and connect to the node here and take node say here and connect to the node there and you know connect here just add some random number of long range connections we can on one hand preserve high clustering coefficient because we're not breaking too much in here you know the, the local structure remains so the clustering coefficient will be still high but at the same time we'll get long range connections and then um, average path or 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 you know if we talk at diameter you know from from here to get across well it's going to be only like two or three hops hops so yeah it, it seems like it is possible to you know keep uh both features you know clustering and make it a small world now if we do what i just said uh we're going to increase node degrees we'll, we'll you know it's going to change the distribution no so we'll, we'll introduce more and more edges you know it's actually one way to form the model another way to form the model the way it was done in the paper by watson strogatz uh in 1998 and we will talk a little more about this paper was rewiring so the idea is you know you take an edge randomly you know you remove it and you rewire it to connect you know make it from a like local edge to the sort of global edge long range edge and uh, you know if you take and rewire some number of edges you will change the behavior of the system <clears throat> so that's a model um, it's actually a single parameter model and, and the parameter in this model is really uh, just the number of edges that's being um, rewired, right? And the idea is the following. We start with a lattice with n nodes and there are k edges per vertex, which is, you know, node degree, the same, the same as we saw on the picture. And, uh, you know, we can randomly connect with other nodes with a probability p, and that will form um, that many long distance connections. Well, the reason for that is because if we have n nodes and k edges per vertex, uh, we have total number of n k over two edges in the system. And um, you know, if we rewire them on connect with the probability p, sort of to long range connection, that how many uh, long range edges we introduce. And, and in this model, it's very clear that if p is equal to zero. <coughs> <laughs> this parameter um, we don't have a long range edges uh, we have a regular lattice and if p is equal to one which means we rewire all the edges to become a long range edges we'll get a completely random graph and so this is one parameter model that goes from regular lattice to a random graph um, and, and, and here is the sort of you know cartoon um, visualization of, of this process um, so we have a, a regular lattice it looks slightly different from what we have shown but it is regular lattice with high clustering coefficient if you look closely here um, you, you you notice that um, for every node there are two neighbors two nearest neighbors and they're connected so if you look say closer here um, you realize the node in the center, it has two nearest neighbors, and they're connected. So the clustering coefficient um, is, is high. Uh, <coughs> and then we start 
as p increases, we start rewiring, creating long-range connections. And we, when p gets to 1, well, it, it, it's, it's a random network. Now, it's not that all has been rewired, uh, but actually, well, sorry. It means all has been rewired in this case, um, rewired randomly. Um, and, and so we know that this, if it's a random network, uh, we know it's r dash Rini model. Um, we know its properties. Here, it is a very regular grid, so we can easily calculate its properties. And remember, we use you, we're always monitoring several things. We're monitoring degree distribution. We're monitoring um, the, 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 the average path length. And we're monitoring clustering coefficients. And for random, we know that. For regular, we'll just get it right away because it's a, it's a regular lattice. It's very easy. So here is what has been shown. So no degree distribution is, in fact, a Poisson-like. Well, Poisson-like uh, is, is it, it just because it comes from random networks, right? Um, and, and, you know, random Erdoshini, they do have Poisson distribution. It's Poisson-like, well, because um, it, it's not exactly Poisson. You can calculate it numerically. Um, it's shown here. Um, when P is equal to 0, which means we have a regular grid, the distribution is really, you know, just one number. It's K equal to, it, it's just equal to the number of node degrees. But when we're adding um, more and more random connection, connections, um, the di distribution sort of getting wider and um, approaching Poisson. And when, and when we have a P equal to 1, uh, when uh, we, we got into the regime of random graph, random network, um, the distribution is actually Poisson distribution. So, but what's interesting is, uh, so, so in, in, in the sense of the distribution, uh, we're not getting power law here. But, you know, nobody expected actually power law because, well, there was no reason for power law to appear in, in this model. But what we concentrate and focus on are clustering coefficients and average path lengths. And so when P is small, um, we, we have a uh, ring lattice. We, we, you know, we, we, we have a triangulation there, and one can calculate um, the actual um, average path lengths. Uh, when P goes to 1, we get a random graph. And for random graph, we do know that um, the uh, average path length is, goes at logarithm n. Clustering coefficient, again, when P goes to 0, it's a ring lattice. And you know, we, we showed that on a particular picture, it was 1 half coefficient you know, for the lattice that uh, Watson Strogatz used. It was 3 4. Um, doesn't matter. The, the point is it's a constant. And when they have a random graph, Clustering coefficient is actually equal to um, the probability that two nodes are connected. Um, and if we calculate, express that clustering coefficient in terms of number of nodes um, and, and their degree, well, that's sort of, it's going to be k over n. Um, if you don't remember, take a look at the picture. So what's interesting is to actually plot the ratio, ratio of <coughs> clustering coefficient um, when the parameter p, when we have a parameter p going from 0 to 1 to clustering coefficient um, at um, the moment when parameter p is equal to 0, where we have a regular grid. And so what it says, what this picture tells us, is um, right here the clustering coefficient is the same um, as um, in the lattice. Um, and when we go to the right, getting closer to the random model, clustering coefficient drops down to zero. It's a random graph. Um, at the same time, if we look at, the, at, at, at this point, these are the ratio of uh, average, length, path, average path length to the average path length um, in, a, uh, in a lattice. Now, it's a ratio. Um, so again, it goes to one here which means you know, we have very long path lengths, but then the path lengths go smaller and smaller and smaller. And so the, the question, the, the real question here is the following. 
that it seems like there is some interval of the p values where we still have pretty high clustering coefficient and quite low path length. So we can be in the sort of small world region where the average distance is small, but the clustering coefficient is still high. And so the belief is that this is a part where sort of real world networks live. So the real world network is some mixture of local structure and uh, long range random connections. And sort of that was a prediction of the small world uh, model. Now it did get uh, you know the, the clustering and uh, average path length correctly, but it, it clearly fails to predict the correct uh, distribution. So here is a simple example um, <clears throat> of, of this simulation. Um, there is a oh, we, we start with uh, with a lattice on the left, um, and uh, on the lattice on the left, average path length is three point fifty eight. Clustering coefficient is 0.49. Um, and if we do random rewiring, and in this case, I actually done 20% rewiring, uh, we immediately degree, de <clears throat> degree, decrease the, the path lengths. Uh, it becomes 232, and the, the clustering coefficient drops, but it doesn't drop to zero. And, and the suggestion from what Strogat's model is that you know real world networks live somewhere in here where they do have uh, you know strong local features that comes from you know very very structured local features, but at the same time they do have r random long range connections um, that allows the network to have small uh, average path length or you know, small diameter, be a small world. So again, the key observation here, you, the network should not necessarily have all their connections, long range connections. It, it can have some very short connections, local connections um, that creates a local structure. And at the same time, it has long range connections. You know, it, 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 it can sort of reflect into project into like sociological um, ideas that if you think about your friends um, in social network, well, you do have lots of friends, uh, you know, from from the university, uh, you know, from whatever hobby you have, um, and those people know each other. So there is a local structure. They these guys, you know, even if you're 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 friends with your classmates, um, they know each other, and and so that creates as triangles. Uh, at the same time, you might and most likely you do have among your friends some random people, some very random people in the sense, you know, you met them once somewhere, uh, you know, you, 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 you connect them on Facebook, you don't even remember how that happened, or somebody just knocked, you know, liked or something, you know, a few pictures you connected, whatever. But these are long range connections, which means, you know, you barely know these people, but those connections will actually take you like very, very different universe, right? And that's what will make this sort of a small world um, so you preserve your local connections, local connectivity, but there are some sort of random long-range connections. And if you think about this, and every person has that kind of uh, structure for the social network, it becomes sort of uh, not obvious, but it you know it becomes more probable that the the world is actually small. Okay, so <clears throat> to summarize. Um, we, we talked about several models, and uh, um, there are actually many, many more models today um, that has been developed in the last 10 or 15 years, um, but they all sort of use one of these three models at their basis. They either combine them or uh, sort of you know, evolve them. Um, so the first one is random graph, is um, our erdos Rene model, and uh, the second is Barabashi Albert model, and the third is Watts Strogatz model, the small world model. And uh, for, uh, say, distribution of the node degrees, p from k, uh, for random graph, we got Poisson. For Barabashi Albert, we got just right, the got, we got the, the, the power law distribution. Watts Strogatz uh, got Poisson. We know that in real world and empirical network, it's power law. 
So in this case, it's, it's a Barbashi Albert model that, that does the best job. Um, if we look at um, clustering coefficient, well, uh, you know, the random networks, um, when n goes to infinity, clustering coefficient goes to zero. Uh, Barbashi Albert also clustering coefficient decreases. In what Strogans, it's constant, it, you know, it, it based on the local structure. Um, it does not change with the size, so it is large, relatively yeah. large, can be made relatively large. So in this case, it's what Strogatz model that, that sort of does what uh, we observe in the, in the real world. Um, and in case of um, average path length, well, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's random graph that does a good job, and it, what Strogatz does a good job, well, simply because it's modeled from a random graph. Barabasha Albert, well, it is, it is okay, uh, but not exactly logarithmic. So that's, you know, that, that's the, the, the general picture of, of these three models. As I said, there are many more models or evolution of those models. Um, you know, if, if you're interested, there are a bunch of literature um, these days on, on how, uh, how this model grows. And, uh, and evolve, but these three are sort of, you know, the, the f fundamental models. So uh, th these are two references um, to, to the papers, one of Barbash and Albert uh, published actually in Science. I mean, the, this, the, the topic of network um, became sort of so interesting and important for people that, you know, it's actually, if you notice, both publications are, are in in nature and in science. Um, so the first one is Duncan Watts and Steven Strogatz. Uh, it's about small world networks. It's actually a very short paper. Um, and the other one is Barabash, Albert, and Science, uh, also a very short paper. Um, I strongly recommend you guys just take a look at this paper. It's available from the website. Um, that's pretty much it for today. Um, so we talked about um, network formations. We're done with, gen, uh, with, with network models. And next time, we're going to talk about um, how to investigate uh, network properties, how to look for, for node degrees, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we're done for today. Any questions?